Before seeing how we can integrate and use Spark in a generalist audio MIDI sequencer such as Cubase, let's take a look at two last windows on the software, that is, the library window, and also a window which enables us to personalize the way Spark must react to certain functions, that is, the preference window. By pressing on the shortcut SELECT PLUS 7, we're opening the library window of the Spark software. This window provides us a nice view of the various little images of the kits supplied by Spark. When we browse with the big knob here, we see the kits file off on this window. When we open an empty project without kits, a neutral image appears by default. We can, if we want to, change its visual aspect with our own images. You need to click on Edit, to click on Change Image, and to go get an image the sizes showed here. All sizes are accepted, but since the image will be compressed, it's better to get images having a square size between 120 and 150 pixels. Let's take, for example, here a picture of my avatar, to validate this image on the project, you need to save it by doing save or save as, by writing a name and a category if there isn't one yet. We can also, as we notice, export our project in order to share it with other people. Then, let's take one of my projects that I created with samples coming from a Venge and Sound Bank. This project has, for the moment, five patterns. Let's position ourselves on a sixth and import a MIDI file which I created previously with another kit that is a bass drum roll. Now, as we notice, pattern number 6 let this bass drum roll be heard with the Vengeance bass drum sound. We can, as we notice, import Rex loops created by Recycle. According to my experience, this option isn't completely optimized yet in Spark's 1.4 version that I use here. Let's pay attention to Arturia's update. The export function enables to export the project, that is, the sounds, the patterns, and the automations. We can export the selected pattern here, whether it's in MIDI or audio file. By getting to the preference board, select 4, a board we'll take a closer look at. Here, in pattern, drag and drop export mode in library. We got two available options, one that enables the exportation drag and drop in MIDI, and the other in WAV file. Let's take the one in Audio Wave, for instance. Now, in library, every time I'm about to slide deposit such and such pattern on the desk, or directly on an audio track when Spark is used as a plugin in sequencer like Cubase, the pattern will be immediately converted in audio like this. In the second half of the library window here, the factory and user buttons enable to show only the factory projects, or only the user project, or both. We can import SPK format projects here, or create a new empty project here. We can finally erase an existing project. By pressing on SELECT PLUS 4 shortcut, you can have access directly to the Preferences window. In this window, you have several options to configure the way Spark will react to the various manipulations. 
Switch pattern instantaneously enables to go from one pattern to the other instantaneously. Usually, when this function is inactive, we can press on the next pattern to wait in advance and once the pattern in progress has completed its cycle, it changes on the other pattern. When we indicate yes to this option, we can change patterns immediately without waiting for the pattern in progress to complete its cycle. Follow current step is linked to the keyboard shortcut of the two buttons press at the same time here. When this option is at yes, this enables to show in the backlit display the steps section on which were positioned. Practical for patterns having more than 16 steps. We've already briefly explained the quantize record function by the keyboard shortcut select plus record. When this function is on no, the pattern's recording won't be automatically quantized by Spark. If the auto start song option is activated, the songs panel will open and the song that's found there will start automatically when we'll press on the song button in the main panel. The click output option enables to have the metronome sound come out on one of the 16 outputs of the Spark. It's especially useful when the Spark's use as plugin in sequencer like Cubase, for example. When the auto roll velocity option is on yes, we hear a little automatic fade in volume when the roller is used. Personally, I prefer to place this option on no and control as needed the fade in with the pads after touch. In next bank pattern switch mode, you got two choices. The first name click on bank switches immediately, acts so that as soon as you click on another bank without changing the pattern's number, the pattern of the same number in the new selected bank will be released at the end of the current pattern. Personally, I prefer the other mode, that is, click on bank and then pattern, where you've got to indicate Spark the bank and pattern that we want to hear. It prevents from having bad surprises, I find. To understand well the automation loop free option, let's listen to this pattern and have fun to automate one of the pads pitch. Now let's place this automation loop free on no in the preferences. Generate small four step loops with the loop option here. Realize that the automations found are exactly the ones corresponding to the places where we are located in the loop. So on the last steps, where there are no automations, we don't hear any automations at the loop. Let's now place this option on yes in the preferences and realize that no matter where we are located with the loop, the automation line is free to follow its cycle. In the file section, you find an option which defines what Spark must do with the audio samples that you insert in your projects. 
and save a copy of audio samples in the library, you got the choice between never, always, and ask me. Just below, you can define the library's path. We've seen that pressing the controller's big button for more than one second, we can pass from the instruments and kits loading. By selecting switch from instrument to project mode, you'll be able with the same pressing technique to pass from an instrument's loading mode to a project loading. In the MIDI import export section, we've already learned with the first function which enables to define by default if we want that the patterns drag and drop exports in MIDI or in WAVE. In WAVE export size, you can choose to export the WAVE file to its normal duration, pattern length, or to double the export length, length of two patterns. By doubling the length, it enables you to avoid abrupt cuts in some effects such as reverb or delay at the end of your pattern. The two following options concern the drum map model, a model for the MIDI importation and one for the pads. When you use the Spark software with the Spark hardware controller, it's preferable in most cases to leave that on Spark. If you want your pads to fully react to velocity, you shouldn't place this option on yes. If this option is on yes, your pads won't react any longer to velocity. The latter will become static. The intensity of this static velocity will be parametered by the slider here. The two following options concern the taking of Spark by an audio MIDI generalist sequencer as Cubase, for example. The last preferences option here sets the knob speed on the Spark.